Welcome back to IT360 Advisor Podcast. Today we have our guest, Todd Thousand. Todd, what's new with you? Well, can you believe that we're into March Madness? We're a quarter of the way almost through the year and through 2022. I mean, it, it just seems like uh, faster and faster uh, time is going by. And, you know, one of the one of the things that that is starting to creep in there is Windows 11. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it, it's been a while since we've done a podcast. I think the last podcast we did was over uh, Cybersecurity Awareness Month. Um, so there has been a, quite a bit of changes coming out in in the world of IT, and one is is Windows 11. And let's just talk about that. So, Todd, what is Windows 11? Well, Windows 11 is the the newest uh, version of Microsoft desktop um, operating system. You know, it came out in to the public. Came out to the public in October of last year, uh, and it's it's taking off uh, just like any Microsoft operating system. Once they announce it, you have you have different buckets of of uh, users. Those people that want to get on it immediately, and some of those, quite honestly, were on it before it ever hit the hit the uh, public streets. Um, and then you have other people that don't necessarily want to be on the bleeding edge or interested, uh, but they, they want to work out the bugs, so to speak, or have somebody else work out the bugs. And then you have kind of that third party that says, you know what, what I've got right now, which hopefully isn't Windows XP or, you know, 98, we have run into some of those still, um, but they may be running Windows 7, for example, uh, or Windows 10, and they're content. Well, let me ask you that question. So if they are, let's say someone is running an older Windows version, Windows 7, can they jump to Windows 11? Well, they can. I, You know, I always like fresh installs if possible. And that's, we get it. It's not always uh, a possibility. But if you look at, if you go back to, you know, your question about Windows 7, there's still a lot of people out there that are running 7, um, Although, you know, realistically, Windows 7 has end, uh, end of life, but there are, I believe it's this year, is the last of the extended security update possibilities. What that really means is they can still get critical patching, provided that they, they purchased the uh, Windows 7 extended security updates. Um, but, you know, again, we would recommend getting off of, of seven and you, you can you can still go go the 10 route um, even though Windows 11 is out it's gonna it's going to uh, be a little while yet that that 10 is is supported so there's no ne necessity to go to 11 but again um, you have your early adopters and some of those people they, they just want to jump there right away which does potentially cause some problems by the way so <clears throat> you have, you know, you're, you're one of those early adopters, you know, like to be cutting edge. What, what are some of the requirements that are needed? I know, I know Windows 11 has a little bit heftier hardware requirement than any Windows that's been in the past. Um, so, so what are some of the requirements? Yeah, that's a great question. Uh, so hardware, you know, there's always system requirements. Um, whenever Microsoft puts out a... Um, a new operating system, you always have those system requirements. Now, remember, system requirements uh, between be, uh, the terms required and recommended, two totally different things. But if you look at what they've done with uh, Windows 11, it, it, it's supposed, supposed to be more secure. And one of those requirements is a, a security chip, it's called a TPM chip or Trusted Platform uh, Module 2.0 is a version that you'll have in your, your desktop or laptop. Um, so that is a requirement. There are ways around it, but there's always ways around anything. Doesn't mean it's right, but there are ways around it. However, you know, we do recommend that security. We talk about security quite a bit. Um, and it's no different with Windows 11. It is it is supposedly more secure than 10, more secure than 7, and so on and so forth. 
but part of that is that requirement for that TPM. When it comes to other things, you know, you look at you look at the RAM that is necessary for a gig of RAM, and we we uh, again that's a requirement. Our recommendation, however, sixteen gig of RAM. You know, things change, applications change over the time, so you don't want to go through this process of getting a uh, Windows uh, 11 installation and a year from now finding out, I did it on an older machine, it did pass the requirements, but it doesn't cut it anymore. So give me a rundown. So someone goes to Windows 11, what what are some of the, the features that they're gonna get from like a Windows 10 going to a Windows 11? Yeah, so they've done they've done a much better job at changing the interface. Um, and what I mean by that is, you know, traditionally Microsoft has been horrible at changing that interface. I mean, if you think about, remember going to Windows, I believe it was Windows Eight. You kind of had the tile, um, the tile look and feel. Actually, Seven did, but but Eight built uh, ha had built on that. But you had that tile look, and everybody was so used to a a kind of a desktop that even though it went from one operating system to another it was familiar mm -hmm. it became less less familiar now we're used to it we're used to that tile look and feel um but they have done windows 11 has done a better job of that it's cleaner especially if you look at the start menu what what microsoft has done this has always been one of my biggest pet peeves and i'm horrible at this but change mm -hmm. And, and so Microsoft, they, they always change something for us, right? So what they've done is they've taken that start menu. If you if you notice on your Windows 10 um, and previous, that start menu is on the left-hand side of your lower left corner, right? You got the little yeah. Windows key down there. <clears throat> what they've done is moved it to the middle. So you got your taskbar along the bottom, right? So you had your start, and then on the opposite side, you had your, your clock and calendar, for example. Microsoft has moved the start menu to the middle of that taskbar. Now you can move it back. You can change that so that it's more familiar. They do give you that capability, but it's just those little things because yeah. that's the first first thing you see. And so it's like, oh boy, is this going to be a rough patch here, or, <laughs> or not? But it's. It, it, I will say what they've done to make it as familiar as possible, even though they've made some changes. I think they've done a much better job this time around. Yeah, I think, didn't they also uh, change it to have the ability to run Android apps as well? Uh, they did. Um, so y you have the capability of running Android apps. A lot of those apps will be through Amazon's App Store. Um, they've also, speaking of stores, so Microsoft Store, where you can where you can get applications, they've done a much better job of that. Um, they've what is what is really nice is is you know one of the features that I like is Teams. Mm -hmm. So if you've got Office three sixty five, depending on the version uh, or the subscription, you know you've got the capability of running Teams. And let's face it, with with the pandemic when it hit, uh, companies were scrambling. How do I get communication and collaboration to work now? Somebody's not in the office, or I've got to deal with the customer. How did, how was that done? I mean, Zoom was had been there, Teams was there, but a lot of companies didn't use it. Pandemic pushed Teams uh, on, or I shouldn't say pushed it on, but was a um, a real possibility of collaboration remotely now. And so with that, Teams is now built into Windows 11. You actually will see it on your your taskbar. So they split up chat and video conferencing there. Oh, nice. But it's nice to have that. Yeah, it's, it's, it, it is. It's very nice to have that capability. Um, so they bake that in. They some of the some of the other things is, you know, again, you look at that taskbar and it, they're taking some um, features from different from, from different uh, operating system. So you look at the taskbar, it looks similar to Chrome OS. So if you ever look like a Chromebook or um, something along those lines, the, the the look and feel, however, looks like it's more of a Mac OS. Hmm. 
And so what they've, they've done is they've, they've blended those backgrounds and those colors. They've softened everything up. Um, you're starting to see some familiarity. And I, I believe that a lot of that is so that if you have somebody that is used to one of these other OSs, Microsoft basically is saying without saying it, hey, come and look at what we've done because it's familiar to you. Maybe we can draw you over to our side. Gotcha. Well, besides look and feel, performance-wise, like what is Windows 11 going to offer you over over its previous versions? Yeah, that's that's probably one of the biggest pieces that I, I would say that they've made improvements on. Um, your battery efficiency is higher. So, so what that means is uh, a longer battery life. Uh, your your um, updates. So you got these Windows updates that occur. Those are smaller packages, and so the updates are much quicker. Um, one of the one of the big things that I really like, and you've seen this in the medical, for example, the medical industry for years, is dictation. Right? You've got you, you had Dragon uh, dictation there, and so a lot of the the doctors and 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 PAs and so forth, they would dictate, and it would go into a Word document. For for example, Microsoft has got that built in. I, I believe they had that previously, but they have um, they have improved on it, and so it's got voice dictation with auto punctuation. Because I don't know about you, I use dictation occasionally for texting those types of things, and it's always, you know. Uh, you're always saying something and then you got to say comma yeah. period and so forth. Yeah. This auto dictates, which is, I mean, to me that, that is huge. And for those people that aren't quick typers or don't like to type, this is great for, for notes. And, yeah. and it's, it's pretty accurate. I mean, I've, it, you've seen accuracy change over the years. It's pretty accurate. So, Still have to um, proofread though. That, <laughs> I mean, it's. Well, a, I mean, I, I'm. I'm. A, I'm, yeah, a, I'm pretty well known for uh, not typing anymore <laughs> on my phone because the way I don't the new iOS update on my Apple. I, I don't know what they did to the keyboard, but I have more typos now. But what I find myself doing is I do a lot more like literally voice texting, not just a voice memoing. But then I find myself mm -hmm. in a voice memo going period comment and it's doesn't yeah. but it's they're not seeing any 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 written text it's just me verbally talking and i'm like i'm an idiot like it's it's just hilarious but yeah the, the dictation i think is key and and um that, that's great that they they figured that out it, it has come a long way recognizing you know the way you speak and i think it learns too doesn't it it, it, it kind of learns your your cadence and it's adaptive yeah your verbiage and yeah. all that way yeah it's it is um, and that's nice. Uh, there, there is one other feature that I think is really nice. Um, I'm habitual at this, and it's a bad example of what you should be, but I constantly have several documents open, um, several applications at once, and then I wonder why my machine runs <laughs> slow. But what is nice in there is uh, in Windows 11, you now have um, what is called a snap layout. So Think about right now we're, we're, we're on this podcast and we actually use Microsoft Teams, but it fills up the screen. What if you had the capability of doing a layout so that I have three applications on my screen at once so that I have Teams here, I can have email next to it and maybe a spreadsheet or a web browser opened all at once. I can see all those at once. Today, without Windows 11, you would do that on multiple monitors, or you could finagle it, but it's not, it's its really not uh, efficient. So I can resize this window, but the problem is when I, um, when I get out of that application, it's not like the next application is gonna take that, that form necessarily, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. So right now, I can, I can have all three of those again, open on one monitor. That's good and bad because now what I'm going to have is nine applications. I got three monitors. So I have nine applications open. Ah, I, yeah. I mean, it's not that you couldn't have them open, but you flip between them, if, if you know what I mean. I can see all three of them this way. Good, good. Well, those are the good things. What are the bad things? Well, again, change 
change is uh, <clears throat> change can be bad because now it opens up we, with any with any Microsoft operating system. The biggest issue that that people have um, or voice is I don't know where this is at. I knew where it was at in Windows 10 or Windows 7. Uh, I can't find this in 11. I will say Microsoft has made it a little bit easier to find some things. You know, before they, you, you got used to, where do I go for control panel? Where do I go for, um, you know, different applications that might maybe settings, trying to find those. They've made it easier to find more organized. The biggest issue that I see, however, with Windows uh, 11 now, you know, you used to be able to um, have a period of time. If I went from seven to 10, I have a period of time where I say, a longer period of time, I should say, eh, I'm not really sure that I like this. I was used to seven, I've seen 10 now. Maybe I don't wanna go to 10. I could roll it back. With 11, <clears throat> you can still roll it back However, uh, I believe it's 10 days now. So after, after uh, a 10 day installation of Windows 11, you cannot revert back to a previous version. So what that means is the only way you can realistically do that is to, if you have a, an image based backup, like, like we do with all of our customers, we can, we can take that image of what it looked like previously and we can throw that back on to the uh, individual's machine. Or the other way to do it is you have to completely wipe everything out and install a fresh version of the previous operating system, the applications, the, everything. Mm -hmm. And that, that can be frustrating because if you have to do a fresh, fresh installation, you lose that customization that you had or that personalization that you had previously. Yeah, all your icons on your desktop and yeah, I mean, that's, yeah, that, that's exactly. going to be very frustrating. Well, let me ask you this question. If someone is interested in going to Windows 11, what are they looking like as as a experience of it being installed? Sure. So if they're – and great question. I will, I will um, tackle that one as if they're our current customer. Sure. So again, depending on the machine, if uh, if it is a remote user, for example, um, some of the things you have to understand, regardless if if they are remote or in the office, um, you know, if it's a business machine, so it's owned by the company, we absolutely can help in that. But what we have to verify again, does it meet the hardware requirements? That's the first thing. Mm -hmm. Again, requirements, not recommendations. Second thing is, does it meet the recommendations? Because ju again, just because it meets requirements, doesn't mean it's going to be a good experience. Yeah, I, that that's exactly it right. It's it's. I mean, I some video games like simulator driving games, they have a recommendation, and then the requirement, and then if you just go with the minimum, your experience is atrocious. Like you have to turn your graphics yes. card way down. You're, you're just visually. So I think that that's a great thing for people to understand is the difference between requirement and recommendation. Absolutely. Um, the other thing is, do your, do your applications that you run in your business, your lineup business apps, do they work with Windows 11? Depends, a lot of times it'll depend on the age. Um, if it's a newer application, we'd like to, we'd like to hope that it does. The, the issue that you have with these app developers is that, you know, again, you have these different buckets and some, some developers were ahead of the game and they, they worked on 11 um, updates that they had to, to their application prior to some lag behind. And what they're doing is this version of the application will no longer work or will not work with 11. We're coming out with a new one. However, there's a cost potentially mm -hmm. through that new version of that application, but it will work with 11. Um, so you just, you just got to make sure that that's occurring. And then we've seen, of course, older equipment, uh, peripherals. So printers, printers are a big one because an HP or a brother, um, 
for example, or Lexmark may not have created a driver that will work with 11. And part of that reasoning is they want you to buy their newer model. Hmm. This printer has been, been out for three, four years, and we don't want this printer to be carried over into a newer operating system. So if they meet all the requirements, recommendations, um, is it just our techs going in, remoting in, install? I mean, what what is the experience? Like, is it something they can do during a work day? What, what's going to be their their work day if we go in and, and install Windows 11? Are they going to have to leave their computer for two to three hours? Like those are, those are the questions mm-hmm. that I, as a salesperson, as I've been talking to some, some clients or they actually brought it up to me about going to windows 11 and just like anything new, I'm like, why don't we wait and see what all happens with windows 11 first before we talk about installing this. But if they say, Hey, let's go ahead and install it. What's that? I mean, what, 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 what are they going to experience as in downtime? I guess. You know, again, it's all dependent upon the machine. Um, what, where are they at on that scale of requirements? Because if they're on the lower end, you know, Microsoft says four gig of RAM, for example, and a gig processor. I don't know anybody's got a gig processor for one. Oh, well, you might have it on a tablet potentially, but um, you know, if you if you meet just the minimum requirements, it's going to take longer, of course. To, to do that upgrade. But I, I think more importantly is having that conversation of what do you hope to achieve out of this? You know, what is your reasoning? And we're not trying to say you can't do it or stop anybody. That's not, that's not the case, but we want to help you with your expectations as that end user. Um, you know, make sure that we're doing this for the right reason. If you just want to do it because I just want to see what it's all about. I mean, but does that help you with your, help you in, in your, your business um, as far as, again, being efficient and productive, or, or is it counterproductive to do it? Mm-hmm. And so that, that discussion comes up, but um, I, I guess specifically to answer your question, it's not terribly long to do those things, um, but it will be dependent upon each individual machine and what, what that configuration is. So I can't give you a direct answer sure. for that, but generally speaking, it's, it, it may be a few hours. Okay. Now, is it something that's an all or nothing for a company or can some people be on 11, some people be on 10? Uh, it can be, it can be mixed. Okay. It can be mixed. And so, um, yeah, that's, that has not been an issue so far. I, although I will say we have not had, Terrible amount of, of users that have gone to 11. Most have have had a discussion, um, maybe brought it up to us and said, I'd like to do this. Um, for those people that are more adventurous, just be aware of your time frame that you, you have to roll back and be aware that there may be some, again, applications or devices that will no longer work, work with, with 11. And then we have to make a determination of, okay, what, where do we go from here? So is that something, I mean, do we do a discovery? Uh, I mean, I know if it's a client of ours, if it, if it is a client of ours, um, we, we know pretty much how their IT network's set up. But, I mean, to have a new client come in, I mean, do we just do a network discovery, do a scan, figure out all their programs and say these will work, these won't work? I mean, is that something that, that we do? How, how does that work to determine what programs will work and not work? Well, it's, and that's a great question. So with our existing customers, we do um, business reviews um, or, or it might be called a strategy overview where it's a regular uh, a regular meeting with them. And, and those those types of questions come up. Could we, could we, what does it look like? What are our expectations? Um, or maybe coming from us, should you, could you? Yeah. You know, what, again, um, so we, we help uh, with that communication between us and, and our existing customers. With somebody new coming in, uh, unless they have they have voiced that, you know, that is generally speaking not one of our priorities is to get them over to 11. Now, where that changes a little bit is if they go out and buy a new machine. And right now, most, most manufacturers are offering Windows 10 
on their machines with a with an 11 a license to upgrade to 11. Um, so they come shipped with Windows 10, but we're not seeing a whole lot of uh, adaptation of of 11, both existing customers and prospects at this time. And, and I think the thing to understand there again is going back to timing. We're talking that it's been out, you know, roughly six months. Mm-hmm. And so, and so I don't want to say I don't want to say the wise person um, will wait because that's not the case. Some may have a a business case to go to eleven. Um, but I, I I always fall on the conservative side of again. Let's see what those issues are and those problems are that that everybody else is having. And can we get around that without having to tackle those problems? If we can't, then we can't, and we have to figure out again what's what's the best course here. But yeah, I'm always a big uh, big fan of doing it in stages. Let's do these five people. Let's do these five th- just to see if if something crazy happens, and and uh, if it does, then the whole company isn't too much, you know, not being shut down because eleven for some reason, a program's not working with it, a vital program with them. So. Yeah. It's, it's, it's a lot like plumbing um, to me, you know, you, you, you think you've got it fixed and you turn, um, you know, you may, you may turn this nut a little bit too much and now there's a leak 13 feet that <laughs> way. And so it, it, it never fails, but it, it's the same. And I like the idea of, again, um, what you just stated, doing it in batches, because if you take, for example, a manufacturing or engineering company that is using um, some type of a, a 3D drawing program, and that, that that's the company's bread and butter, and you go and install this on there, and that company is the, the version that they have, which, let's face it, these applications are not cheap, yeah. but that version that they have doesn't work with windows 11 you know it's potential that somebody didn't do the due diligence um on it but i think more importantly is did did that that person's um ability to create revenue just get shut down oh yeah that's and you know that that is that is the potential there because again you know some people some people like that the newest and greatest we we understand that it's it's um it's again what what is the what is the most important though for the business sure sure well todd um about 30 minutes here so i think we've covered a lot about windows 11 uh got anything else you want to include on this no i i think that well I, i think the biggest thing again is especially if it's an existing customer, we're just asking, hey, let's have a conversation about this. We're not saying you can't do it. We, ne- we would never tell you you can't do it. There's always a way to do something. It's just what is that way? And, and we want to work together to uh, make sure we're going down the right path. Uh, and again, if, if it is an existing customer, um, we do have these conversations in our in our business reviews, especially if it's time to replace a machine. Um, or you got a new user, you know, we'd, we'd love to, to talk about what that looks like. Should we go to 11? Should we stay on 10? Do we wait till next year? Is, is, uh, um, are all the problems going to be worked out? And, and I can answer that one easily. No, <laughs> all the problems are never worked out, but, but can we get you closer to what you, you want to be your goal? Gotcha. Well, Todd, I think that's some great information. Uh, we definitely appreciate the time. Hey, if, if any of the listeners out there want some more information on, on Windows 11 or just anything IT in general, feel free to reach out to us. Uh, you can reach us through our website at it360.biz. That's it360.biz. Thank you. 